systematic and expository study of the Bible at the Deeper Life Bible Church offers you an enriching steady spiritual growth, thus opening your eyes to God's own way of righteousness. In this case, you will have the opportunity to listen to one such enriching Bible study. So prepare your heart to be blessed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for keeping us alive. We praise your name because we are alive for a particular purpose. In your wisdom, you've made us to remain here for now so that we can glorify you. And therefore, Lord, we pray all the period we spend here on earth, your purpose for which you let us here will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that today you will grant us more of insight into the purpose of our being here in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray that as you grant us this insight and we know why you are keeping us here, it will be our concern. It will be our endeavor spiritually, always to make sure that your will, your purpose and plan is fulfilled day by day in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. As we read your word today, grant us wisdom from above, Amen. understanding from above, Amen. that what you want us to learn, we will definitely learn. Amen. And it will do good in our lives, so that by your wisdom, will be able to influence other people to also come to you. Let our light so shine, O oh God, that others will know that you have done something definite in our lives, and that through knowing that, they will come unto you as well, so they can glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. <laughs> Today, if you look at the outline, it's still one of the special studies we're having at this period of time. The Lord is leading us into these specially selected studies so that the loose ends of our lives will be gathered together, collected together, and then we'll be able to live in a way that glorifies the Lord. We have been systematically going through the epistle to the Colossians and Recently, we just finished that series. So what we're doing now is to be able to supply some things that may be missing in our lives in a practical way so that we can live according to the wisdom of God. We can live in the ways of the Lord. Today, we're looking at Proverbs and we're looking at some of the verses from chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6 and chapter 7 chapters 4 5 6 and 7 let's look at it from chapter 4 verse 1 here ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding very clearly then what we're studying today is addressed to the people that are called children take note of that Chapter 5 from verse 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom. Bow thine ear to my understanding. From that verse that we have read, what we'll be studying is addressed to the people that are referred to as sons of God. In chapter 6, verse 1. My son, if thou be shorty for thy friend, if thou art stricken thine hand with a stranger. Verse 20. My son, keep thy father's commandment. Forsake not the law of thy mother. Well then, these things are addressed to those we can refer to as sons. Chapter 7. Verse 1. My son, keep my word and lay up my commandments with thee. This same chapter 7, verse 24. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. 
So then, in various places, these chapters are addressed to sons of God or children of God. You know that the Bible tells us very clearly that inspired writing, that is the Holy Scripture, they are addressed unto us and they are good, they are profitable unto doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness. And that all these scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. So then, in the chapters we are studying today from Proverbs, the Lord himself, God himself, inspired the writer to write to his own children. And therefore he says, my son, he says, my children, before we go on. There may be people who may be at a loss as to who are the children of God. There may be people who do not understand who do we refer to as the sons and the daughters of God. People who do not understand when we refer to children of God that these are the particular people that are referred to as the children of God. Let's clear up something. In Romans chapter 9, verse 8. Romans chapter 9, verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. And they, these are not the children of God. But the children of promise are counted for the seed. So then a person cannot say, I was born by a religious Solomon. I was born by a worshipping Solomon. Because of that, I'm a child of God. No. They which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. The reason I put it that way to you is that Solomon wrote the Proverbs, the major, the major part of Proverbs. And even though he said, my son or my children, this is not just for the literal children of Solomon according to the flesh. Because I've told you now that God inspired him to write. And he was writing on behalf of God. And he was writing to the children of God. And it says, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of promise, they are counted for the sea. Who then are the children of God? These are the people who have reconciled with God. In John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave power. To become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Come with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, 18, and I will be. A father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. The question, how does one become a child of God? What will somebody do? That God will eventually refer to that individual as my son, or refer to them, if there are many, as my children. Very clearly, that individual will repent of sin. It will come to a time when he feels the conviction of sin. And with that conviction of sin, he goes on his knees before the Lord. He turns away from evil. He comes out of every form of evil, every form of sin, and then he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, it is while he's praying, confessing a sin, turning away from them, going, telling the Lord he will not do evil anymore, that the Spirit of God will bear witness with his heart that he's now a child of God. When a person has become a child of God, he becomes tender, he becomes soft-hearted, he becomes willing to learn. And it is those people that have the willingness to learn, the teachable spirit, the meek spirit, the tender heart and the tender life, who have received the kingdom of God as little children. Those are the people that God addresses in a passage we're studying today. And in the passages that we're going to look at, chapters 4, 5, 6, and 7, where four things are brought before us. Number one, the way of wisdom. 
Number two, the word of wisdom. Number three, warnings against wickedness. Number four, words for the wise. Number one, the way of wisdom. And these things are described in the passages that we're going to look at. But then let me first of all tell you that when we talk about the way, you know, the way of God is different from the ways of man. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. So then, a child of God, that is somebody who has repented, turned away from sin, and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, he comes into the way of the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ himself says that the narrow path or the narrow way leads unto life everlasting, life eternal. But the broad way leads unto destruction, unto perdition. The way of the Lord is the narrow path. Then we're talking about wisdom. It is good to understand that there is a difference, much, much difference between the wisdom of God and the wisdom of the world. Great difference between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. And I should tell you that when you become a child of God, all the wisdom of the world you should abandon. You should just uh, take away from your life so that the wisdom of the world will not hinder or disturb the wisdom of God from operating in your life. If you are operating in the wisdom of the world, you will not know God. You will not find God. And if you have been born again and you get involved in the wisdom of the world, you will not enjoy the presence of God. You will not know God to the depth, to the height, to the breadth and the length that God wants to reveal himself that you will know him. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. From verse 21, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. It says, in God's own wisdom. He has done it in such a way that the worldly wise man will not know the presence of God, will not have intimacy with God. That the person that is operating in the wisdom of the world, he will not know God through that worldly wisdom. It is by the preaching of the word of God that you become saved when you believe. And it is that wisdom from the word of God that will be leading you on, guiding you on. Chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom. Verse 5, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Verse 6, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 13, with things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. I read all this to you so that you will understand as we talk about the way of wisdom. Number one, we're not talking about the way of man. Number two, we're not talking of operating in the wisdom of man. Let's now go back to Proverbs chapter 4. And let us see the way of wisdom. The way of wisdom. While you're opening back to Proverbs chapter 4, let me remind you that we often say, and, and the Bible says it too, like father, like children. Our God, Heavenly Father, is wise. There is no foolishness in Him. And because He is wise, we will become His children. He wants us to operate in His own wisdom, 
He wants us to walk in the wisdom of God. And so if you have become a child of God, discover the way of wisdom, the way of the Lord, and the wisdom of God. Let's see now Proverbs chapter 4, reading from verse 1. Hear ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake not, forsake ye not my law. Let's stop there for a moment. Do you know that the doctrine of the word of God gives us spiritual wisdom? Many people just toss doctrine aside. And they say they do not want anything to know, they don't want to know anything about doctrine. Because to them, doctrine is uh, like a chain, like a control, like a restraint, like a yoke. So that they do not want anything about doctrine. But do you know? The doctrine of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ, what is that? That is what makes you wise unto salvation. Why it not for that doctrine of justification by faith? How shall we become children of God? Why it not for the doctrine of sanctification, holiness of heart, holiness of life, purity of life, a kind of doctrine that is checking us, controlling us, and leading us, and telling us, don't put your leg there, don't put your eyes there, don't put your hand there, don't go in that direction. Why if not for these teachings of the word of God? How would you have been wise? How would I have been wise? Don't you know it is wisdom? When we get the word of God that gets us out of the net, that wants us against unequal yoke with the unbeliever, that shows us that if we sin, there is punishment coming at the end of the life of sinning. Therefore, let us understand, the way of wisdom is when a child of God will take the doctrines of the Bible and he will understand them. He says, I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. You see, I'm, I'm always very challenged when I find children of God who have discovered that the doctrines of the Bible for them is the way of life and the way of wisdom. Uh, there are a few people, and let me tell you what they do. They take that booklet or that book, uh, uh, the complete study series in one volume, and they go from one page to the other systematically. And they, from the beginning of the month or from the day they are starting, they go through study one and study two. And study three, all those things on covenant, on eschatology, on the last days, they, they get everything into their lives. Then all the outlines of the Bible study they add in a path. They go in into it and they take the word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept. Those people, oh, they will have the wisdom of God. Because all those things you are reading, as you go through those outlines, you are having the wisdom of God in verse 4. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my word, keep my commandments and leave. Here is the way of wisdom. Let your heart retain my wisdom. Let your heart retain my word. You see, before your heart can retain the word of God, there are steps you will need to take. And we know what our children do. Our children have all these big, big books big dictionary, big encyclopedia, big science books, and big mathematics books. How do they retain what they read in, the, in those books? Number one, they read those books regularly. Because if you only read once in a while, how are you going to retain? And this is the wisdom of God. This is what makes a person to live. And heaven will say, that man, that woman is wise. Therefore, number one, you will read the word of God. Read regularly. Read frequently. But don't read like a secular book. Don't read it like a newspaper. Read it as the word of the Heavenly Father to you in particular. Not only that you read, endeavor to understand. Endeavor to understand. Because we know it is not the hearers of the law that will be justified in the sight of the law. And the Lord Jesus himself gave the parable. He said, these are the people that received the seed by the wayside. When they have heard the word, they did not understand. 
So then the devil came and he snatched everything away. Read it frequently and endeavor to understand. Not only that you endeavor to understand, make sure that that time you understand. Do exactly what it says. If you are not practicing the word, if you are not uh, doing what the word is telling us to do, then your reading will not give you the wisdom. It is when you do it, your light will shine. It is when you practice it, we will see the manifestation of the wisdom of God in your life. You talk like the word wants you to talk. You keep quiet when the word of God wants you to keep quiet. You run when the word of God wants you to run. You get involved in what God wants you to get involved in. You separate yourself, withdraw yourself from what God wants you to withdraw from. You do not have unequal yoke in your life because it's the word of God. You do your business according to the word of God. You lead your family according to, your word, to the word of God. Is that not wisdom? Is that not how we see the manifestation of wisdom in our lives? Not only that, you will memorize. Memorize part of the scriptures that we're reading. You, you will not be able to memorize everything. But listen to me. There are some basic truths of the word of God you have to memorize. Let me remind you of our children once again. Our children will not be able to memorize all those big, big books that they have, that you have bought for the children. But you know that they have to do something. They have to memorize the times table. And they have to be able to know two times two will make four. They have to know that three times nine will make 27. They have to memorize some basic, basic things. Because if they do not memorize those basic, basic things, how are they going to solve problems? The same thing with us that we may not be able, we're not going to memorize the whole Bible, but there are some basic, basic things that we ought to memorize. And you memorize a little at a time. A little at a time. Every day. This is what will make us to retain the word of God and keep the commandments of God and then we shall live. You know what we're talking about? The way of wisdom. Read it. Understand it. Apply it and do it. Memorize part of the word of God and make sure that you also give the word unto other people. Let's look at it in chapter 5. Verses 1 and 2. My son, attend unto my wisdom and bow thine ear to my understanding that thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge Thy lips may keep knowledge. How do we know a wise man? When a person opens his mouth, and then we see that he talks out wisdom. By what he keeps in his lips. You ask him questions, he doesn't answer immediately. He's checking up from the store of the word of God in his heart. He's checking up the appropriate one that will come out and then will just feed that occasion. Let me use this illustration for you. A person has a wardrobe. And there are many kinds of clothing in that wardrobe. There are, you know, some casual wears. There are some special wears. There are maybe suits of apparel. A lot of wears. And then your colleague is going to have an interview in a particular place looking for a new job. How do you know that man is wise? He goes to his wardrobe and then he looks through and he selects the appropriate clothes for the appropriate occasion. Now, he's come back from the interview. Now, he wants to just relax. He wants to go and visit a friend, just a casual friend, just a brother, just a sister. And now he looks at his wardrobe again, and because he knows the occasion, he just wants to go and visit a friend, he chooses another appropriate piece of clothing. Don't you see that man is wise? The same thing. When an occasion comes up in your life, when an event comes up in your life, and you look at the store of knowledge, at the store of verses, you look at all the things you have stored in, into your life, and you go in there in your heart, and you pick out the appropriate verse the appropriate word. And before you open your mouth to say anything, you say exactly what is appropriate. That's a wise man. That's a wise woman. It says in verse 2, that thou mayest regard the God discretion, and thy lips may keep knowledge. Therefore, let us keep the wisdom of God in our lives. This is the wisdom of God. Chapter 7. 
from verse 1. My son, keep my word and lay up my commandments with thee. Why all these uh, commandments that were being given? Keep my words. Well, if you don't keep the words, are you going to be able to find it when you need it? We tell our children, keep those books together. Keep those pencils in the, in the proper place. And that pen, that viral, that eraser, keep it in the proper place. Why do we say that? So that when that child needs it, he'll be able to bring it out and use it. The same thing. We ought to keep the word of God. Store the word of God in our hearts. Lay up the word of God, the commandments of God with us. So that at the time we need it. It may be the time of temptation, as we learned yesterday. It may be that there will be some problems and difficulties and we're going to need the word of God. Store them up. Lay them up. Keep them. Retain them in verse 2. Keep my commandments and lay and my law as the apple of thine eye. I'm going to ask you a question here. You keep the law of God as the apple of your eye. Do you love so, somebody so much that you allow him to dip his finger in your eyeball? No, you don't carry love to that point. The same thing, this word of God we are learning. You are not going to be so intimate and so free and so loving and so careless with a man that you will allow him to touch the law of God in your life. Or allow him to touch the commandments of God in your life. Because it says you keep the commandments, you keep the law as the apple of thine eye. Find them upon thy finger. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. And call understanding thy kinswoman. Call understanding your relative. So then we are to keep in the way of wisdom. I've told you our path. What we do. But now let me tell you the path of God. There is a path that God does. Whereby the word of God is reaching upon the tables of our heart. In Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Here, the word of God is telling us that the word of God is so essential and it is a way of wisdom that God will go ahead and he will do something. He will write the law in our inward parts. And he will write that word in our heart. There are times that some people will see that the word of God is not written in their heart. A single memory verse that is in the third scripture. That that thing has been with them for one whole week. They cannot recite. They cannot remember. Or sometimes it is that a person will say, I don't know why. I read much of the word of God. I never remember. I never recollect. And when I want to use that word of God, it doesn't come handy for me to be able to quote and use and apply at that moment. Other people will say, I make a lot of mistakes. And I would have made the mistake before I remember the word of God that could have sheltered me, protected me from that mistake. You know why? They have not submitted, surrendered their hearts to the Lord so that he will write the law in their heart. You see what happens is this. When you are born again, the Lord cleanses you. Your slate, which is your heart, has been dirty. A lot of things have been written there. And there are a lot of bad, bad things in your memory, in your mind. Things about evil, things about sin, memory about sin, about the evils you have committed. But then when you are born again, the blood of Jesus is used to clean your slate, to blot out your righteousness. And to remove all those evil things in your system, in your inward part, in your life. But then, this thing is now clean, nothing is written there. You become a child of God, you begin to read the word of God. You begin to study the word of God. And eventually, you even go back to the Lord saying, Oh Lord, I want to get sanctified. At that sanctification, the Lord uproots the Adamic nature. And then, not only that, he now writes his law in your heart in your inward part 
And when that law has been reaching there, you will see that when you read the word of God, it will be easy for you to remember. It will be easy for you to apply. And when there are situations at home, situations in the place of work, situations in the church, situations in the open, you'll be able to apply the word of God. Not only that, eventually you become baptized in the Holy Ghost. Do you know what happens after that? Then the word of God that you have been storing up, the word of God you have been retaining, and the word that has been reaching on the tables of your heart, when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, then the Lord will enlighten you on those words. He will guide you into all truth. And every time you need to remember, he'll just take it out of the place God has written it, and you'll just remember. He will remind you of the things I told you. That's why after we are born again, we do not stay where we are. What I mean is that we do not remain at that same level. We make progress, we move on, so that we can be sanctified, so that eventually we are also baptized in the Holy Ghost. Then, let's go to number two. The worth of wisdom. The worth of wisdom. Now, when we say something is valuable, that means it is important. That means it has worth. And we ought to recognize that wisdom is very valuable. That is, the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God in our lives is very, very valuable. It's of great, great worth. Let's see the worth of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4, from verse 5, all through to verse 13. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, you embrace wisdom. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my saying, and that the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right path. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Here we see the various things that wisdom will do in our lives. Let's very quickly go through them one by one. In verse 13, it says in the last part of verse 13, She is thy life which means that our spiritual life hangs on the wisdom of God, on the word of God, and that if we want to know the length and the depth and the breadth and the height of the wisdom of God, get into the word of God, then you will live the abundant life, the abundant life. Then go to verse 6. It says it will preserve you. We need to be preserved from the nets of the snare, the snare of the enemy. The nets of the wicked people. We need to be preserved. What will preserve us is the word of God. And we need to be kept away from temptation and evil. What will keep us away from temptation and evil? The word of God. In verse 6 it says it will keep you. Keep you away from destruction. From death. And keep you away from falling into sin. In verse 7 it says it is the principal thing. If you have knowledge and you don't have the wisdom to apply the knowledge, of what use will that knowledge be? In verse 8, it says it will promote you. That means in spiritual things, the word of God. When you learn the word of God, read the word of God, meditate on the word of God, understand the word of God, apply the word of God, practice the word of God, and make sure that your, your life is totally based on the word. And that's how you become workers in the church. That's how it will promote you to honor. That's how it will promote you to become a herald of salvation, a proclaimer of the way of the Lord. It is when you give yourself into the study, into the application of the word of God. And then it says in verse, in verse 8, it will bring you to honor. In verse 9, it will minister more grace, abundant grace in your life. Till verse 9, it will become a crown of glory. In verse 10, it will give you long life. 
And in verse 11, it says, it will be directing you in the right path. Then in verse 12, it will not make you to be hindered. It will not make you to be so stumble. And then it says in verse 13, it's your very life. You see how worthy, how worthy or you see how important the word of God and the wisdom of God is. Now let me remind you as we're talking about wisdom. We're talking about the word of God in particular. Because this word of God is our wisdom. We don't need to, you are not going to get to the depths of the sea saying, I'm looking for wisdom. You will not go to the cemetery or graveyard and say, I'm looking for wisdom. You will not get into the uh, books of, of philosophy, of uh, human ideology and of psychology and say, I'm looking for wisdom. You will not get into the books of uh, the proverbs of the world and say, I'm looking for wisdom. You see, there are people who have the Bible in their hands and they never read the Bible. And they say, I'm looking for wisdom. I'm looking for wisdom. And they do a lot of occultic things. Or they do a lot of uh, things that are spiritually deadly and dangerous for them. And they say they are looking for wisdom. Other people will write to overseas, India, Jamaica, America, or other people will go into the village. They say they are looking for hidden, mysterious wisdom. There is no other wisdom that can get you to heaven. There is no other wisdom that will make you to know God. There is no other wisdom that will make you to operate in a life that is beautiful and nice and pure and holy, except what you have in the Bible. Read it, you will be wise enough to walk with God. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, reading from verse 5 and verse 6, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land, which whither ye go to possess it. Keep, therefore, and do them. For this is your wisdom. There's no other thing. The word of God is your wisdom. We've seen that the word of God is so important. That it is not enough that you just learn it at the Bible study like this. But on your own, you read the Bible. On your own, you read those outlines we have been storing up all these years. Because you ought to seek that wisdom of God. Love that wisdom of God. Acquire the wisdom from above for yourself. That means that as you acquire this wisdom and knowledge from God, you will discover it is worth more than all you can get from all the other books. All the other books. And you know how many books you studied when you were at school? This is the word that will give you more wisdom and will even prepare you for heaven. Wisdom in life's pilgrimage will keep us free and safe from all tumbling blocks. Now there's something that wisdom or the wisdom of God does in our lives. It does very many things, but there's a particular thing that we want to talk about that the wisdom of God does in our lives. And we find that leads us now to point three. Warnings against wickedness. Warnings against wickedness. We cannot talk of the wisdom of God fully and completely without talking about warnings against wickedness. Now, if you have little children, and these little children are now going away from your immediate presence, they're going to go to boarding house, they're going to get to school, and they've never gone to that kind of school before. And you know the things that are happening in the world today, in our own country. You know how innocent children, children who have been taught in the way of the Lord, how they can go up to school like that and they can learn the ways of the world. What do you do before they go? You as their daddy or you as their mommy, you call the child and you begin to give the child encouragement and warning. And you begin to tell the child where you are going. Not all people there are people of God. Not all of them are Christians. Therefore, understand what I've taught you. You will say, people like this can appear to you. People like this may want to befriend you. But take care that you do not go the way of the world. What are you doing? You are lending that child the wealth of experience and the wealth of wisdom that you have. You are giving warning against wickedness. Or sometimes if you have a lady or you have a young man that is old enough to get married, 
this is your own child. Then, while the marriage is getting near, there will be time you will call your daughter. There will be a time you will call your son. You will say, well, I've brought you up in the way of the Lord. I've shown you the way of wisdom. And in this house, you've seen your mommy and myself, how we have been living. Now you are going to have a home of your own, a family of your own. This is what we call marriage and family. Then you begin to share with this your daughter or this your son. And then you also begin to give this your son warning so that he will not go the wrong way or she will not go the wrong way. What are you doing when you are giving warning? You are helping this child with the wealth of wisdom that you have. The same thing God has done. God in various parts of the Bible and in, in the place we're studying today, he has given us warning against wickedness. And he does that in his own wisdom so that we will not fall from our steadfastness, so that we will not yield to temptation, and so that the river of corruption will not sweep us away and will not be drowned in the sea of corruption that is in the world. Let's look at these warnings that God himself is giving us in his own wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Reading from verse 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. And pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Those two verses we will need it everywhere we go to the end of our lives. Our children are going to school, they will need those two verses. A person is marrying and is getting into the extended family of the person is getting married to, he will need those two verses. A person has now got work, is going to a new place of work, he will need those two verses. A person is traveling abroad and is going to see people that he has never seen before. And a lot of these people, they have their own corruption, their own evil, their own sin, their own wicked ways, is going to need these two verses. A person is going to mix with some so-called believers from other assemblies, maybe business or work or company or whatever, may make them to interact, is going to need these two verses. But wherever you are, you will need these two verses in your life. You're a young man, you're a young woman, or you are adult, you are, you are married already, we need these verses. Look at them again. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Why are we warned against wickedness? Look at verse 16. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. That's why we are to avoid them. That's why we will avoid the way of wicked people. Their intention, their major business is to make you fall. And to make others fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness. They drink the wine of violence. Verse 19. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. That's why we're giving all these warnings actually. The Bible gives us numerous warnings against the fascinations of sin. That is, sin is like a bait. It's like poison. But then it looks beautiful on the outside. But what is inside at the center is really deadly and dangerous and it will make us to lose our stand and walk with God. We are warned of many things in the word of God, but in particular, we are warned of the strange woman, of the adulteress, who will attempt with her words and manners to be able to tempt us and lead us astray. In a passage under consideration, the destructiveness of immorality is graphically portrayed. Let's look at them in chapter 5 from verse 3. Chapter 5 from verse 3. For the leaves of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. You can meet them in the place of war. You may meet them in the market. You can meet them on the side of the road. You see them almost everywhere, and they know how to talk. They know how to tempt. 
they know how to entice. They know how to appeal to the flesh. They know how to appeal to the luring, to the, to the enticement of the flesh that the person will just go astray. In fact, it says they do not only uh, entice with the voice, but with the dress, but also with their eyes and with everything that they have. Look at it from verse 4. But our end is bitter as one wood and sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now, therefore, ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not near to the door of her house. Don't come near to the door of her house. If you are wise, if you are sorry in the word of God, you will never go near the door of the prostitute, of the strange woman, of the one that is wanting to tempt you to do evil. Verse 9. Let thou give thine honor unto others, thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy well, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. When you have venereal disease, incurable disease, and AIDS, uh, that terrible disease that has come on the world now, because of immorality, then you will mourn and regret. Uh, what will be the regret? Verse 12. And say, how I have hated instruction. And my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Look at it from verse 20. And why will thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman, and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. And he pondereth all his goings. His iniquities shall take the wicked himself. And he shall be holding with the courts of his sins. He shall die without instruction. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Look at chapter 6. Chapter 6 of Proverbs. From verse 25. Lost not after her beauty in thine heart. Neither let her take thee with her I lead. I told you, it is not only with the words of the mouth that a strange woman, that a, a prostitute, that a woman that is given to the loss of the flesh can trap in a man, but also the eyelids. Beware. Verse 26. For by the means of a warish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Actually, the adulteress is not wanting to give you enjoyment. It's hunting for your life. And that eternal life you have, spiritual life you have, that uh, intimacy with God you have, that power with God that you have, what he wants is to be able to take it away. Don't you know what happened to Samson? When Delilah came into his life, you will see that uh, Delilah hunted for the life and for the power and for the anointing and authority in the life of Samson. Verse 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burnt? Can you take the fire of lust, the fire of adultery, the fire of immorality, and then the clothes and the garment of salvation not be burnt off? Verse 28. Can one go on hot coals and his feet not be burnt? So, he that goeth into his neighbor's wife, whosoever touches her shall not be innocent. Verse 32. But whosoever committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding he that doeth it destroyeth his own soul you destroy your own soul some people say hey, I know if I commit adultery if I commit fornication all they will do is stop me from uh, being a worker in the church and after all I'm not even a worker I can do whatever I like you destroy your soul a wound and dishonor shall he get and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Look at chapter 7 from verse 24. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her, to her ways. No, go not 
astray in her path, for she has cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Do you remember Solomon? Do you remember Samson? Do you remember David? Do you remember that in one day, 23,000 people died of the children of Israel because of immorality? Do you know that this thing will take life away from you? This thing will make you look like a worthless fellow before that little girl? Do you know that it will make you like a little piece of bread that doesn't have any value before the person you committed adultery with, you know, before a person commits fornication and before a person commits uh, adultery? The people, they respect you. They respect you because they believe you are a Christian. They respect you and they honor you. And if they want to greet you, you see that respect. Once you become so cheap, that you as a lady, you give yourself to a particular man, the respect is gone. You become like a piece of bread. Ah, they say, that one is a useless fellow. That one is a careless fellow. That one, uh, uh, that one is just being used by the flesh. Or if you are a man, they had respected you before. They honored you before because you know the word of God, you can preach the word of God, you live a quiet life, you live a moderate life, and the people respected you. The moment you get into evil and the moment you get into fornication or adultery it may be with a lady in your office it may be with somebody a careless fellow around here and they, they respect all the things will go if you stand behind the pulpit and you are preaching the fellow will say this one is also preaching all the respect is gone you become like a piece of bread what about the agony going on in your heart what about the confusion in your own heart? The many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell. And then the devil will be making fun of you. The devil will be saying, do you say you are a child of God? Do you say you are a brother? Do you say you are a sister? Are you saying that you are calling God your heavenly father? What prayer are you praying? The devil will be bringing discouragement and will be telling you, you know what you have done? You know that you are a dirty, corrupt fellow and that adultery, immorality is in your life. You may try to hide it in the public, but inside you have been slain. You have been destroyed. Many strong men have been slain by her. I pity some men that will not take the words of warning, that will live careless lives. And they will say, I am strong. Are they stronger than Samson? That will say, I am wise. Are they wiser than Solomon? That will say, I am a really beloved person in the sight of God. Are you more beloved than David? Let us be careful. And let us heed the words of warning coming from the word of God. Let's round up and go to point four. Words for the wise. What for the wise? The Lord has preserved for us words of wisdom. Let's look at it from chapter 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Verse 20. My son, attend to my word. Are you a child of God? Attend to the word of God. If you are a child of God, the Lord loves us. And then he's speaking to us. He doesn't want us to get into trouble. Look at all the, all the care that we take every week. And you will see the love of God for us in the church. Have you seen any other church where they will print study scripture, make it available for us? Building the body, make it available for us. Deeper Life magazine, make it available for us. Monday Bible study outline every Monday of the year. And we don't say, well, today it rained, our printers could not print. Today, uh, something happened, there was no ink, our printers could not print. Can you think of any other church? We put this in the hand of the children of God, of everyone coming every week. Not only that, we have, as we are preaching now, we record in cases. And even after we have finished the preaching, you can go to the light tapes uh, at the central church and you will say, I want the message sometimes. A, a message will challenge you. Three years ago, five years ago, then you come to the light tapes and say, I need this particular cassette. And those people, thank God for them. They are able to go back to their records and dig out that cassette for you. Have you found another place? See how God has loved us in this church. 
and he is doing everything, surrounding us with everything, so that by the grace of God, we will be preserved in the way of righteousness. That's why he says, my son, if you are a child of God, attend to my words. All these words, they are available for us. Let us attend to the word of God. I'm sure, in this church, I'm sure you know, we have preached enough that if anybody really wants to get to heaven, he will not miss the way. He will not miss the way. Because Monday, the word of God is there. Thursday, the word of God is there. Sometimes, you know, when you come on Monday like this, you will say, this looks like the best message I've ever had in my life. Then you come another Monday, and you will say, today, today, now, is really the best message I've had in my life. It addresses that problem. It knocks that problem. It's really preparing me for heaven. If God is doing so much like this, in our lives shouldn't we seriously take to the word of god and it says attend to my words incline thine ear unto my saying let not let them not depart from thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart for their life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh keep thine heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life put away from thee a forward mouth and preserve and perverse leaves put far from thee let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established turn not to the right hand nor to the left remove thy foot far from evil the Lord has revealed so much to us today let me ask you have you discovered the way of God, the way of repentance, the way of peace, the way of faith? Have you taken the way of the Lord, the narrow way? Have you gotten the wisdom of God into your life? Have you repented of, thrown away, abandoned the wisdom of the world? Are you operating in your life in the wisdom of God? Are you taking in the word of God, storing in the word of God? Are you retaining the word of God in your life? Are you reading it? Are you memorizing it? Are you meditating upon it? Are you endeavoring to understand it? Are you making sure that you are applying the word of God to your life so that you will live according to the word of God? Have you understood the importance of the wisdom of God? Have you evaluated the wisdom of God? Have you seen that it will preserve your life? Have you seen that you ought to run after it? You ought to seek it? You ought to acquire it in your life? Are you taking all the trouble? Like our children take and they read all these big books so that they can have a little of the knowledge coming from the academic area. Are you doing much more than these children and you are taking in the word of God every time? It will make you wise in the family. It will make you wise in the church. It will make you wise when you are outside there among the unbelievers. Are you taking note of the warnings against wickedness? Are you making sure that you are not eating the bread of mischief? Are you making sure that you are not having anything to do with the wine of violence and the bread of wickedness in your life? Are you abandoning and avoiding the way of darkness and the way of wickedness? Are you looking to the word of God? Are you making sure that the strange women and the adulterers and the adulteresses and the prostitutes will not have any influence upon your life? Are you making sure that you do not love the world? Neither the things that are in the world. Because if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Are you making sure that you do not allow a Delilah to catch you with the eyelids or with the lips? Or with, the, or with the kind of smooth words, flattering words, are you walking in the path of righteousness? Are you making sure that the word of the Lord is stored up in your heart and you are living by this word of the Lord every time? Examine your life, examine your heart, and see whether all the provision of the word of God that God has given us in this church, you are making use of them so that you can live in the word, in the wisdom of God. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. All these things the Lord has revealed to us again today, take them to the Lord in prayer.
I believe you have been blessed. Don't let this message die. Listen to it again and pass it to others. You can get more from God at the Deeper Life Bible Church. Our headquarters is Deeper Life Bible Church, Bagada, Lagos, Nigeria. Blessed are your ears for hearing these things. We'll meet in heaven if you do them. <laughs>